So today, we close out our stewardship campaign. I notice we have a lot of visitors here today, and I want to tell you, we don't talk about money every Sunday. This is just the time of year when we do. I want to thank those of you who have attended the stewardship gatherings that Soren mentioned last month. For those of you who didn't make it to one of these gatherings, I have to say, it sounds like you missed out. They provided an opportunity for BUCers to reflect on what brought them to this congregation and what they still find exciting about this beloved community. Our stewardship theme is, From This We Live, a line taken from the hymn, To you I give, from you I receive, together we share, and from this we live. The question is, what is the this in the last line of the song? From what do we live at BUC? What about BUC gives you life? Well, the results are in. First and foremost, what attracted you to this congregation is the people. Participants at our gatherings talked about feeling a sense of belonging here. They spoke of finding a community of like-minded people, but people who accept difference. It was the beloved community itself that attracted people to BUC and has caused them to stay here. This experience of being around like-minded people who accept difference was particularly poignant for those who participate in our fellowship groups. That includes small groups, chalice groups, as well as the humanists of BUC and the Sunday morning discussion group. It also includes our caregivers support group, our grief support group. There's also the chalice choir, our biking group, sharing dinners, mama's coffee house, many more. Some people even said that they enjoy the fellowship of serving on a committee. <laughs> I think that means that we must be doing something right. There are many ways to be involved at BUC, and the people who are the most involved have expressed the most satisfaction with their involvement. I think what people want most from Unitarian Universalist congregations is exactly that, a place to belong. There are other things that people want, like a great music program, a robust religious education program, opportunities to be involved in social justice, sermons that make them feel and think. But they can live without one of those or some of those if they have found that they have a home in that congregation, those like-minded people who also accept difference. Unitarian Universalists tend to be a motley bunch. <laughs> Many of our congregations function like an island of misfit toys. <laughs> we have the free thinkers, the humanists, the mystics, the pagans, the eternally unsure, the disaffected Christians and Jews, all together, sharing one roof and one worship service. And sometimes our different needs are going to create tension. That's just a fact. Should a worship service have more God? Should it have less God? Should we have a common ground from which we work? Or does that defeat the entire purpose of an intentionally, theologically diverse community? We wrestle with these questions. And sometimes there is conflict. But we remain in relationship through that conflict. After all, we wrestle together, not apart from one another. Some may ask the question of having different fellowship groups contributes to the divisions that may arise among us. I say it does not. When we have groups like the Humanist Group and the Sunday Morning Discussion Group, it gives people an outlet for their specific needs and their perspectives. Everyone should have that. To that end, I'd actually like to see more of these groups pop up. I would love to have a pagan group like CUPS, the Covenant of Unitarian Universalist Pagans. It's a national group. We could have a chapter. I would love for someone to start a theists of the UC group. I think that when we have our spaces to live out our identities, it allows us to be more forgiving when a worship service 
runs against our particular perspective, which it will. I was talking about this with a colleague of mine recently, and I learned that UU ministers in Michigan long ago developed a metric for dealing with this. I don't know why it's just in Michigan. I have some theories, but <laughs> first I've encountered it. The common wisdom here is that if 70% of a Sunday morning service works for you, you're good. I like that metric. 70% is a strong majority. And it should be expected that the occasional service will dip below that 70% bar, and that's okay too. That's one. It's reasonable to expect that some parts of a UU service will not meet all the needs of each person in attendance. If you have a feeling that 70% of the service spoke to you, that really is enough. And remember that if you didn't like something, there's probably somebody else who did like it. And your willingness to sit with your discomfort about that other 30% is actually your ministry to the other person who did like it. And caring about each other's needs that's how we find balance in the tumult of theological perspectives that we have at any UU congregation, including this one. This is actually our third principle, acceptance of one another and encouragement of spiritual growth in our congregations. That doesn't mean that we encourage another person's spiritual growth to be more like our own. It means that we are each confident in our beliefs which allows us to be comfortable with another person's beliefs. For example, another person's humanism is not going to change my theism, nor is it going to tarnish it or diminish it in any way. In fact, their humanism helps me understand my theism more fully. A healthy and loving dialogue between different sets of beliefs actually allows us to articulate our own beliefs more fully. Open interaction with the diversity of beliefs is what encourages our spiritual growth, which is what we're here to do. These interactions are the greatest gift that we can give to each other. The acceptance of one another and encouragement of spiritual growth is perhaps the principle that does the most to distinguish Unitarian Universalism from other religious traditions. It's what makes us unique. It's what allows us to be the beloved community and sets us apart from a social club. Questions and deep wondering are what we are here to do. This is what it is to be with like-minded people who also accept differences. Almost 70 years ago, 19 people broke away from the first Unitarian Universalist Church of Detroit to form a new UU presence in the suburbs. They began by meeting in someone's living room, and then in a school, and then later bought this land and built a church. We are the keepers now of that legacy. Our beloved community was their dream. We are a congregation with an excellent music program, a robust religious education program, ways to be involved in social justice and sermons that I hope inspire both thought and feeling. Those who came before us believed that we could be all of this and more. They had a vision for the future, and so do we. According to the information gained at the stewardship gatherings, we dream of being a larger congregation again. And I have heard with longing, stories of the times when we had two worship services, the largest youth program in the state. We want to regain some of that. And at the same time, we want more opportunities to make personal connections. That is what the this is, and from this we lived. Fellowship. We want meaningful relationships with other people in this church. We love each other deeply. We want to be bigger, and we want to be more closely connected. Both of those goals can be met through fellowship groups. <coughs> Friends, we live in a confusing and challenging world that is at once heartbreaking and beautiful. 
We want a place where we can find comfort, solace, and perspective. Some of that work is done in worship services. Most of that work is done in small group settings. Fellowship groups are where people find the connection and the personal fulfillment that they seek by being involved in the church community. And we have a multitude of fellowship groups. We have a wealth of opportunities here at BUC. It is said that a church of our size is made up of lots of groups, each one representing a mini church. For a lot of people, their particular fellowship group is the church for them, and they may rarely interact with other facets of the congregation. <clears throat> Each one of our fellowship groups might seem like it is an independent entity, but it is not. They are intrinsically tied to the larger congregation, both practically and spiritually. Many of our fellowships use building space for meetings. Most use our communication outlets. Often they use our office supplies, our office equipment. But most importantly, the greatest value and resource of these smaller groups are the people. And the vast majority of the participants that are associated with this church, they were associated with the church before they found their way to the fellowship group. For most people, Sunday morning is the inlet, and then people find fellowship groups. It's not that way for everybody but it is that way for most people. The UC functions as a, host, as a home base for each fellowship, and each fellowship functions as a home base for each participant. It all works back to our interdependent relationships. I'm reminded of Russian nesting dolls of churches. <laughs> Inside each part of the church is another church, which brings us back to our question of stewardship. Any benefit you have received from a fellowship group, from worship, from a committee, from anything that's affiliated with this congregation has a cost. Your stewardship contribution is necessary for this constellation of human relationships and experiences to continue. BUC, like every other UU congregation, depends on your presence, your labor, and your financial contribution. We are indeed the keepers of the dream that those 19 people first had so many years ago. Just like them, we have hopes for the future, more people, more opportunities for close relationships. That's a vision for the future that I can see, and I hope you can too. We can get there together, but only together. We build that dream through our contributions of time and financial support. I am so grateful for the hard work of our stewardship committee and to those of you who attended our gatherings. I'm grateful for those of you who have already turned in your pledge cards. We're depending on you to turn in those cards so that we can build a budget. The church's budget is a roadmap for how that church can build its people's dreams for the year to come. We've spent a month now gathering data about your dreams for this beloved community. Now we need the data on how we can make those dreams come alive. Today is the deadline for turning in your pledge cards, but we'll be happy to take them for the next week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make us call you because we're full. <laughs> about a month ago, during the sermon that began our stewardship season, you heard a lot about what stewardship is. As a reminder, it is caretaking. This church has been handed down to us over generations, and we want to be able to hand it down for generations to come. Our hopes of that hinge on how we take care of this community today. We take care of BUC when we give of our time. We take care of BUC when we give of our talents by taking on a task or a leadership role. We take care of BUC through our financial and financial contributions. It takes time, talent, and treasure to make a church run. It takes your time, your talent, and your treasure to make this church run. When we open up those Russian nesting dolls of churches within the churches, the smallest doll is you. 
I am not what holds this church together. The staff is not what holds this church together. Our programs are not what holds the church together. The board is not what holds this church together. You are what holds this church together. It cannot function without you, without your financial support. So our stewardship season is wrapping up. Don't miss this opportunity to support this beloved community and our dreams for the year to come. May it be so. Amen.